With my roll cage sitting on new feet and mountings, I could move on to preparing the floor and sills for seat mounting brackets. I go into depth as to how I've chosen the system that I'm going to adopt at the end of the video. But for the moment I can just explain that I'm following the 2023 drawings from the FIA for Group A, N and RGT cars. The principle of the supports which will go under the seat brackets is that those bars behind me there will be welded in four of them uh, across the car. They will have end plates welded onto the ends of the bars and then counter plates welded to the floor with captive nuts in them to bolt to. The captive nuts will pass through holes drilled in that inner sill section. So that's why I need to get it down flush. So I've cleaned out all that soundproofing and I'm hammering it flat. There's a little tab on the original seat mounting cross member uh, that gives like a an extra layer, unfortunately, to the exactly where I want to put my counter plate. So in order for it to sit flat, I'm actually going to drill the spot weld of that out and cut off the tab. Uh, I will then weld the edge of the cross member back in so it's still held probably stronger than original uh, but I'll have a flat area then for my plate. So although I'm removing a little bit of material um, I'll be replacing it with uh, much more material in the long term. I want to mount the bar as close to the original mounting as possible. Remember uh, the right hand side of this car is actually going to be my co-driver seat. I'm putting the front support for the co-driver seat just behind the original seating cross member and for the driver I'm going to put it slightly ahead of the original cross member. I fitted an FIA seat to a cadet uh, years ago for a hill climb so I know um, where I need to fit these brackets. I've all that seam sealant cleaned out now from the areas I'm going to be welding so I won't get any nasty burning. It's the tightness of the space here on the tunnel that's defining how far forward I have to weld those brackets. I'm going to have to remove some material from the cross member and the, the rear seat support. Locating the back cross member is a little bit easier. Drill out the spot welds in that cross member and also on the front edge of the rear original support. I think I went up to about 8mm with the drill bit to get nice and broad and not go too far down into the floor. I just pry it loose there with the chisel and I'll make a cut vertically down that then to remove that section again and I'll weld it so that it gets its original structural integrity back and perhaps a bit more grinding that down over the, the bend because uh, won't get a cutting disc in there and use the chisel then just to, to cut across that so this is where I'll put a, a weld on the material that's remaining then I'll cut at the bottom then I get my cutting disc and go down along it vertically A little bit of a wiggle to get that off. So that's the inside prepped for welding in brackets for seat supports for the co-driver. I just clean off underneath the, the floor so that this under seal doesn't go on fire when I'm welding in those plates. As you can see, I am still sitting on the floor. Um, I've been preparing the, the body uh, of the car to fit a seat mounting system in. And uh, just to give you a little bit of the, the background to the regulations uh, behind that. Um, the Appendix um, K, the, the historic uh, regulations um, and how they kind of blend into the modern system, uh, from the FIA, that, that basically lists that cars of this type after 1962, if the original front seats are changed, this must be for a complete seat system for which the FIA homologation is valid. Um, 
this is kind of mostly like the from the the seat supports and the actual seat itself. Um, the Motorsport Ireland uh, scrutiny requirements are mainly talking about the which homologation um, is valid. There's not a lot of detail about the actual floor mountings. Um, looking back then to the Appendix J, which of 1981, which would be what um, governs. Uh, this car, the spec that I'm hoping to build this to, um, back at that time you were still allowed to run the standard seats. So again, there's not actually a lot um, of regulation about the floor uh, mounts. So um, the best thing I think to do is I've looked at the, the current regulations because I am going to have to build mounts because actually when I, um, I prepared one of these cars before for hill climbing and I built a little bracket for the back which was um, just based on the um, on the floor, uh, and although it was quite substantial, it still rocked. So I want to go along the with the the current kind of modern regulations. Um, I don't see, since I have to make something, I might as well make, well make something um, up to date, and that might actually future proof this for change that might be down the road. So I'm looking at uh, Appendix J um, for 2023 which covers um, Group A and I think it's RGT cars. So I've looked that up uh, on the FIA.com website and when you go there you need to go to Sport and Regulations, International Sporting Code and Appendices and then if I remember right you, you go down through those you go to Appendix J and I think it's number 253 that's it NA and RGT so you open that up and I think it's about page is it page 16 of that. There's a really excellent diagram and I've seen that some people who sell the kits, you don't have to make all this yourself. There is, um, uh, there are kits out there made to follow the, the, the FIA um, regulations, um, but you can, you can follow those yourself and make it up bespoke uh, if you so wish. So that is, yeah, that's on page 16 of that and there, there's an excellent um, diagram which gives you all the spec which is that's what I'm following uh, in this case. So the principle of the, the mounting that's going in here is basically uh, a steel crossbar and the minimum um, width of that. You can use a tube or you can use box section. Um, I've chosen box section. I think the minimum um, width is 35 millimeter. The, the minimum thickness of the steel is 2.5. Um, I've actually got um, 3 millimeter thick and it's um, 40 millimeter wide, so uh, a little bit above the specification. Um, you need to um, put end plates on that and they are um, of a surface area of 40 centimeters squared and they must be uh, three millimeter thick. So that's the same thickness steel as I've been using for um, the plates that I've used for mounting the, the roll cage. So I'm actually still working off the same sheet of steel for that. And then they have counter plates, which must be a minimum, minimum of two millimeter. And they're actually welded into the floor with um, nuts uh, welded onto them. And you can, you're allowed to drill a hole in the, well actually not the floor, but the actual um, box section or the, and the, and the, the tunnel. Um, so you can have the holes for the, the, those nuts to, to go into and you weld those plates on and then you, you bolt the, um, the end plates that you've made uh, on the crossbars. So that's what I'm working away on. Um, my, uh, oh yeah, the, 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 the couple of little things that I did spot in the, um, in the the old um, regulations from 1981 were just kind of specifications about like the distance um, between the centers of the seats and also you can see the stuff that came in from um, the trouble they had when the, the Fiat had the, the Fiat 131 of Barth and they put their co-drivers in behind the driver in the middle for a better uh, center gravity so in order to prevent uh, people doing that anymore there was there's now a, there was from that time there was a specific uh, instruction about the, the seats being a distance apart from each other on the, the longitudinal way but they can be a bit forward and back and that's important because in this case um, I'm going to uh, put the co-driver seat just that little bit further back 
uh, a lot of my co-driving friends uh, and the candidates to, to come in the car are a bit taller than me. The, the, the shape is a little bit complex um, ahead of the original um, uh, cross member um, on the right hand side but on the left hand side it actually suits exactly what I want. I, I need a bar just a little bit ahead. I know this because I have fitted a, a competition seat to a cadet before and I know uh, where it goes so I don't actually have my seats yet um, to, uh, to try to fit them but um, I, I know where the, the driver's seat needs to go. There's actually very limited um, options for where the bars can go uh, uh, on the, on the co-driver's side. So uh, what I put in will be nice and level and flat and ready for um, the universal brackets to, to fit the, uh, the seats. And they can be adjusted uh, forward and back on, on the, the mountings that I built. So I'll get on with that now. I, I've uh, cleaned up the, the right hand side. I need to finish off on the left. And in my next video, I'll be making up the bars two for each side, and um, that will be for the seats. The it'll be a much later video when uh, I come to fit my seats. I'll then these because these bars will be removable. I'll have the car all painted up with the, the brackets that I've made in, but um, they will be removable. I'll be able to take them out and drill them uh, exactly for the um, the seats that I get for the car.